Family life on the road was definitely something that was different and unique. We were gone four months a year for probably close to 15 years. The kids all loved being on the road. I think we went, did one tour that was 77 days long. We were on a mission. Right. Uh, that God had given us a role to play in the evangelization of the church. He really gives you the grace to do it, and that's what we found as a family. All right, I'd like to introduce you to the Mopiti family, and some of you may know us as the Ketchup family. <laughs> So my name's Gerald Mopitzi. Um, I'm from Bruno, Saskatchewan. Well, this is my beautiful wife, Denise. The kids that we have are such a blessing. It excites me, it gives me joy. Um, it was pure grace. Well, having a, a larger family Wow, I am really humbled um, by what the Lord has done. It's important to give incentives when, you know, great behavior is happening, they get along, they'd be able to stop and we, you know, go, go out for ice cream, go to parks, uh, play, you know, ultimate frisbee together. It may mean that they can't be a part of something uh, when we stop or something that we're gonna do that's really fun, well, they're gonna maybe miss out on that one occasion. We have been here for, uh, for 17 years. We have been Part of a ministry, or founded a ministry called Cat Chat, and that's what we've been doing for the last 20 years, is making the faith come alive for kids. It was out of a couple things, out of a need that we saw in the church, mm -hmm. and also it was a desire in our own hearts that we wanted to make the faith come alive for kids. I was teaching religion class and wanted to make the faith so much more exciting and engaging for the kids. So music is a powerful tool for kids. So Cat Chat has a lot to do with music. Mm. Uh, catchy songs, a lot of people say they love the music and what it does for them. Rayanne, our oldest, definitely such a peaceful soul. Mm. So gentle and kind. My parents were always super intentional about raising us in the faith. There also comes a lot of responsibility, which is, which is a good thing. Um, and growing up, starting my own family and seeing my daughter be the oldest in our family has been a neat kind of reflection on how it all comes full circle. It feels you have a certain responsibility and that's something that uh, I think both Rianne and I uh, love and, and don't take for granted. Uh, are very intentional about that. So. Hi, I'm Dominic Mopensi, and I'm the second oldest in the family and married to my wife, Catherine. And we have a daughter, Lucy, and another one on the way. He's, uh, he's awesome. He's he brings a lot of humor to our family. He likes to joke around. He's the drummer for the family. Yeah. yeah, he had a natural gift. Somehow God blessed him with uh, a gift of percussion. I'd say, yeah, it's been interesting. As I get older, I feel like I really appreciate more and more the the gift that my mom and dad have given me by raising me into the Catholic faith. 
made me want to pursue the faith and have the faith, you know, be part of my own journey as well, um, seeing the impact that it had in my mom and dad's life. And uh, yeah, just seeing them alive in the faith really made me passionate and wanted me to be alive in my faith as well. Jerome, wow, awesome. Talk about adventure child. He's one of our kids that calls us higher, challenges mm. us to go deeper and to go higher in, in our faith, in all aspects of life, actually. So my name is Jerome, and I'm the middle child in the family, which is my favorite place to be. Some people don't like being the middle child, but I, I think you get the best of both worlds. Uh, so I love being the, in the middle and then being able to hang out with my older siblings as well as my younger. And uh, being able to have siblings and have uh, lots of, at least some, <laughs> some siblings in a family. We have um, five kids, so it's not a crazy amount, but it's, it's great to be able to have friends like that because they're all my best friends. I literally don't know what I'd do without my siblings. Yeah, Jerome brings a, a beautiful uh, groundedness to our family as well, mm -hmm. and for his siblings. He loves his siblings so much, and he wants what's best for them and loves them in that way. Mm -hmm. I would say my parents, my parents really modeled the faith for us, so they, they really invited us into um, their own personal faith. And the best way that they shared the faith with us was by living it themselves. He's the second youngest? Second youngest. Second youngest in the family. How does it feel to be second youngest in the family? I feel like, because there's always, there's like the oldest kid, which is a big deal, the youngest kid, which is a big deal, even the middle kid, which is a big deal, but then the second youngest is just kind of like, oh, it's the second youngest. Can't really go wrong. <laughs> Can't go wrong. This isn't free, this isn't life, because I know God is calling me to something more. One of my favorite person is Luke. Like, Luke, being my younger brother, there's something about him I just love so much. And and he has taught me what Christ's love is like, and like nobody else in my life. Just based on like how much I love him, I can see how much love Christ loves us in different ways. Wow. I've told you that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> You're so nice to me. You're literally the most loving person ever. Oh, and Jerome is one of my favorite people like, ever. He is, he's a disciple on a mission. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then there's Luke. Some action going. Yeah, no, not a hand. Oh. Love his. He's very witty. He's very. He's very fun, spontaneous, and chill. This is a song Luke wrote. It's called uh, Selfless. I'm tired of waking up wondering if I'm loved. Don't wanna look in the mirror and wonder what's become of the man that I thought I was. So I pray to God for the grace. I pray to God for the grace to be selfless. Selfless, oh God. How did my parents help me grow in the faith? Well, pretty much everything from when I was little, they would do so many things to encourage me. And it wasn't that they just simply told me to live my faith and kind of give me little books or little prayers and teach us prayers. The biggest thing was their witness. So seeing them just in the morning, sitting in their, in their chairs, reading their, their Bibles or their spiritual readings, and simply seeing them go to daily mass, uh, all these things. So their witness, was huge for me. And then Vanessa, our youngest. Wow, what a pure and beautiful and humble soul. Uh, 
I guess being the youngest has been really interesting because I've spent a lot of time with my parents and I have always loved being with my siblings. They're like huge role models and inspiration. Yeah, Vanessa's got a real uh, beautiful heart of, of love for others. And she works very hard at, uh, mm. at evangelization, at spreading the faith to, to others. I think going into marriage, I really, I really didn't think beyond three kids. I, I think just because that was the family I was raised up in, I just thought, mm, you know, that's probably how many kids we would have. But I certainly wasn't, uh, I think, definitely wasn't where I should have been in my walk with the Lord. Um, I wasn't open as much, but sort of a lot of my conversion happened in my first year of marriage and, and beyond. That journey was pretty special knowing that I was more open to what God wanted in, in being more open to having more kids. I was very blessed. I grew up uh, learning about the faith. My mom prayed with me often. And uh, my dad was a, a, faithful, a faithful man who had a quiet faith, yet uh, yeah, he was a real inspiration to me. And growing up was a real privilege because uh, I was the only boy, so I was spoiled in a, in a healthy way. I was very well loved and uh, gave me a lot, of, um, a lot of security in my family because I was uh, so well loved by my siblings and my parents. What I thought my chances were of marrying Gerald, the guy next door, and honestly, when it did happen, I thought it was a miracle because I thought there's no way I'd be able to marry Gerald Mopetsi because, I mean, he was very, very good looking, very popular. He had this mullet, which was really cool too. <laughs> hockey player, he was a great hockey player. He played just like, reminded me of Wayne Gretzky actually. And I thought, what are my chances of ending up with him? And I remember, you know, leading up to the wedding, just being so over, overjoyed and that God would love me so much that he would give me Gerald. And as time went on, um, the Lord was definitely working because we both had this attraction to each other, but we didn't really share it with each other. We trusted in that process and uh, it's been such a gift to see how the Lord worked in our marriage. And we put our gifts together as best we can to create this ministry called Catchat. And, and the Lord just unfolded it. And, uh, and you know, raising our kids in that process, we were living in a sense what we were teaching through Catchat. So it was a real life um, experience, bringing our experience to, uh, to other families through, through the ministry. Jesus. Our Blessed Mother has played a huge role in, in my mothering, looking up to her in so many ways. Yeah, raising the kids in the faith and keeping them engaged. Mm. Um, we always surrounded our kids with the heroes of the faith. Uh, just knowing and being grounded in the truth that I'm a son of God. That's what really uh, gives me confidence to then go out and, and try and make decisions on my own and to, to seek the Lord and to seek His guidance in prayer and to recognize that uh, without Him that I'm, I'm nothing, really. 
I can't really think of a time where we didn't have prayer, so that's really good. It's been super good for me to learn how if hard times come. I wake up and then the first thing I do is give my day to the Lord and I read this little morning offering. So it's about two sentences long, but it just gets things in right order and it's giving the first fruits of my day to the Lord. For the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Carrying it forward into our own family, making sure that prayer is the start of our day and that the sacraments are still such a huge part of our daily life. <laughs> yeah, just seeing them alive in the faith really made me passionate and wanted me to be alive in my faith as well. well Denise and I took that very seriously, uh, having personal prayer lives, but then bringing it even further, what we, we had every evening, what was called prayer sharings. And uh, these prayer sharings were opportunities for our kids to share whatever was on their heart. And, and we try and steer it to a way that they can help teach from an experience they had that day. So it's encouraging the kids to share their faith and we did it within a family dynamic. And it really had the kids pondering what is the Lord doing in their own personal lives. The privilege it is to, to be a father, to be parents. And I gotta give Denise, my wife, credit. Uh, she has been amazing in this whole journey of parenting. Just by who she is, uh, who the Lord has made her, our kids would not be who they are without Denise. And uh, what a privilege to have been able to learn from her in her ways, in her ways of parenting and being a beautiful mother to our kids. And uh, yeah, what a gift, what a gift. If we can see the good and the beauty of this whole process of parenting, no matter where you are. We're in a different era of parenting now. Kids are older, but everything uh, is pure grace. If we, if we tap into prayer and ask the Lord, what do, you want, what do you want to show me here, Lord? What can I do uh, with you in this process? Because we are called, you know, to be working together with the Lord to collaborate in raising kids as parents and with the Lord. So what a gift it is and a privilege uh, to be a parent. He's making me become holier. <laughs> <laughs> Not always easy in the moment, of course. Right? But, but so, actually, it, it's what God calls us to. Marriage is the ultimate saint maker. Kids are the ultimate saint maker. You know, intimacy and... Well, what do you mean by that? Well, that just, I know, for just example... That, that word can be quite... Well, then they, they, they feel a sense of belonging, a sense of security when they see mom and dad loving each other, hugging, that, that kissing, you know. Yeah, for sure. When, when kids see their parents loving each other, like Denise says, it brings security. Yeah. God wants family to grow because that's how the kingdom grows and that's how heaven gets filled. It's with families who've decided to love, serve, and honor their kids and to raise them up so that we can all be together in eternity. Yeah, and I, and I, I think it's so admirable when you see a beautiful, faith-filled family. It's a beacon of hope. Mm. It's a beacon of light for our world today. You leave me notes before you leave And lipstick on the bathroom mirror The way you love could part the sea I'm thankful that you want me dear Do you think about how these paths all lead us to somewhere? Do you think about traveling and growing old? Even though family can be a little messy sometimes, it's an amazing way to experience the mercy and forgiveness of God. Because family is meant to be a school of love. The way you dress up on a warm night Still gives me the shivers I will confess you to the starlight When we go down to the river
problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.